When we designed an iPad Windows workflow for Bicyclemen's PDF reading, most of you suggested OneNote as a better solution. That is why in this video, we'll go through the do's and don'ts when syncing your notes on the iPad and Windows PC in OneNote. Hey guys, it's Ropsy back with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. If you haven't seen the video for this workflow design, we recommend watching that video to understand the context of this video. In a nutshell, the challenge was to find a system to sync PDFs between a uh, Windows PC and iPad. So in this video, we'll cover the following. Pricing, how much would it actually cost you to use OneNote as your main note-taking application that you sync across different platforms? PDF reading, what's that like in OneNote on the iPad? And then we'll go through the do's of designing a digital workflow around OneNote and some obvious updates that we've seen in OneNote because we hadn't looked at the application for a while. Adobe Acrobat Reader was the application we recommended for Bicyclemen's iPad Windows workflow. So to wrap everything up, we're just going to look at filling out forms and signing documents in Acrobat Reader. You can consider using OneNote for your workflow when you have the free one terabyte storage on OneDrive. Otherwise, OneNote actually costs the subscription for Microsoft 365. To be fair, that subscription comes with a lot of applications and it's one subscription that gives you value for your money. That potential subscription was the first reason we did not choose OneNote for a student because we assumed he doesn't have a free subscription from his university, which was probably why he wasn't using OneNote in the first place. OneNote handles PDFs poorly. There is no other way to put it. You have to print out your PDF to display all its pages. And when you do this, the application treats each page in your PDF as if it's an image. That reduces the resolution of your PDF, especially if it's a long one. The pages are movable on the page, so you can create space around your PDF. You can also lock each page to stop it from moving around. Once locked, you can't unlock the pages later. Since the application treats your pages as images, it means that for PDF reading, OneNote does not support outlines. Lack of outlines makes reading long PDFs a bit difficult. The app does not support hyperlinks. You can't open them for faster navigation and you can't skip through pages. And also you can't interact with your PDF text. You can't select it, you can't search through it, which makes OneNote unusable for PDF reading. So those are the reasons why we did not choose OneNote as a solution for the Windows PC design we did for Bicyclemen. Who then should consider using OneNote for their iPad Windows workflow? For starters, Surface Pro users or any Windows tablet or a laptop that supports stylus handwriting input. You can also consider using it if you already have a Microsoft 365 subscription because that means you have one terabyte for OneDrive storage. Then you can certainly use OneNote over years and on multiple devices. Teachers and students can benefit from the classroom notebook, especially when they have teams. It is much easier to distribute, mark, do, and submit assignments using the OneNote Classroom Notebook integrated with Teams. If your university or your, your school uses Microsoft 365, if you have that free subscription, then using OneNote makes a lot of sense. 
We couldn't help but notice the change in OneNote's user interface. It looks modern, clean, exactly what an app should look like in 2022. OneNote has also added a new feature that saves screenshots of websites to your notebook. You can choose where you want to save the screenshot by selecting the notebook and section. You can then add the title and some notes before sending the screenshot to OneNote. This creates a new page section. Your screenshot then behaves like any other image in the application, meaning that you can cut, copy, delete, or rotate it. You can add alt text. You can copy to sticky notes. Set a picture as background to lock it in place. Below the screenshot is the URL. You can open, copy, or edit it. The handwriting experience has also improved. You can now search your pages to arrange them according to name, which is alphabetically, date created, and date modified. Now let's go to the Acrobat Reader section. The last time we talked about Adobe Acrobat Reader, we focused on the comment section of the application. Now we'll look at filling out and signing forms. Your experience with this partly depends on how well the form was structured by its creator. Structured forms are the easiest forms to fill out in Acrobat Reader because the application automatically knows what's required for each section of the form. You can simply tap a section to fill it. But we had trouble filling out a well-structured form. It's probably a bug, but it's a painful one though. Acrobat Reader gives you some tools to fill out your form so you can type out your answers or fill them in boxes. The application lets you increase or decrease your text size. You can tick check boxes or use an X or dot. You can also encircle sections. Unfortunately, you don't determine the color you use for these. It would be nice if we could. You can also add a signature to sign your documents. It is easier to delete anything you put on the form, so that's not any trouble. And that brings us to the end of this video. We hope you guys liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you, Fantastic Human, for watching. See you in the next video.